when we are sent, we can fall back on the one who has sent us. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group, part three of this five-part series. Esther and Mordecai's testimony to help us to see better and how God wants to use us in our mission to our kingdom that's around us. When we look at this story, we go now to Esther chapter four, but before we flip to the page, remember, subscribe to this channel. We appreciate you watching. In order for the video to be easier to be found by others, please hit the like button. Please hit that so that others can see it. Remember, share it. Just outright share this with someone else so they can be encouraged to fall back on the one who's faithful to us. Falling back on the one who has sent us is all that Esther and Mordecai do. When we look at their stories and we think of their testimonies, there's this element of heroism that is justified. They did something that most would not have done, but they did not do anything that no one else could do. In Esther chapter four, in response to Haman's rush now to get this royal decree to exterminate Mordecai and all those who are like him, he does not know that the queen, Esther, is actually kin to Mordecai and actually a Jew herself. So when Esther 4 verse 1 says, when Mordecai perceived that all of this planning was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice and a bitter cry and come before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. This is now what Mordecai does. His response is real. He's worried. He's scared. He does not know what to do. And so in response, he does not do this because of a cultural pivot. He does this because of a conviction. I'm falling back on the one on whose promises I was standing on. I know we talked about how God is a call to bow in the boardroom. I, I, I was sent by God to, see, to, to, to be in this boardroom. And now I'm, I'm about to get kicked out of the boardroom. I need to go and fall back on him. Mordecai falls back on the God, but he doesn't do it alone. It says there in verse three, in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, this extermination decree, there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So what's happening now? Mordecai turns to God and what do they do? The people turn to God. They call on him. They put other things aside and put their focus on falling back on the promises of God. What starts with Mordecai now extends to the people, even to the extent that the decree extends, it even gets into the queen's house. There in verse number 15 and 16, then Esther, when word finally got to her, she bade them return unto Mordecai this answer, go. Gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink these days, these three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so I will go unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Esther makes a decision, and it echoes Mordecai's, and it echoes the one of the people. You got to go to God. The same God who has now made me queen of this empire, he's got options. And Esther is saying he can choose. He could have called me to be a sacrifice. He could call me to perish. But just like Mordecai made a decision that I'm going to stand in the boardroom, Esther makes a decision. She says, I'm going to stand on the throne. And I'm not just stand, stand on the throne of being the queen of, 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 of the Medo Persians, but I'm going to stand on the throne of God because I've got a high priest. I've got a savior who's pleading on my behalf. I've got a savior who's pleading before me in, in, in front of the most high God, meaning most high, there's nobody else above him. If I can go to him and get things right, he can make this situation right. He can, he can resolve this 